Hello and welcome to this video on homeostasis in the kidneys. This is the first of a series I'm going to do on this which have come from specific requests from students. So thank you very much if you're making requests of videos and thank you very much if you're still watching these. So many, many thanks again and big apologies to the student who initially requested this uh, this particular topic. Uh, Amelia, I'm very sorry it's taken this long and she's so far into her medical degree now that I imagine she knows a hell of a lot more about it than I do. Uh, but still, for you A-level students, this is obviously going to be for you. I'd also like to say a big thank you to um, Erin Rose Andrews, who is the artist who's going to be uh, doing the backdrops for my videos from now on. There's her tag, era.anatomy. You can look at her stuff on Instagram, right? as you can see, these wonderful backdrops that I've got to work in front of. So this first video is purely anatomy. It is the structure of the kidney into the structure of the nephron. So we're talking about a system that is located in the abdomen of your body here. Your kidneys, of course, are around the back. Those two fatty bits just above your waistline hide your kidneys. They're a major organ and they're connected, as you can see, to the main blood vessels, the central aorta and the central vena cava that run up and down your body. Okay, The uh, word is renal for anything to do with kidneys. So the one taking blood into them is the renal artery and the one taking blood away is the renal vein. And you have two kidneys, therefore two of each, okay? It's dirty blood, blood with the, the breakdown products of metabolism in it that comes into the kidney and clean blood that comes away because of course kidneys are blood filters. They're there to remove waste, particularly urea. And as you should know, urea is a breakdown product of excess amino acids where amino acids get chopped up uh, in the liver and the ammonia gets turned into urea. If you're an OCR student, you'll have to know the ornithine cycle, uh, but that's a different video. And it's the urea that then slightly less toxically moves around the body and gets filtered out into the urine, ends up coming through the ureters, down to the bladder to wait to be excreted, okay? So if we look at a kidney in more detail, when the renal artery here brings the blood in, that dirty blood is forced under high pressure right to the outside edges of the kidney. Okay, it's forced out to the cortex, right, the middle bit being called the medulla, and then right in the middle here, where the waste products filter back, you've got the start of the ureter. We call that the pelvis, and it basically goes off into each individual filter. So the blood comes in under high pressure, out to the cortex, the waste products end up in the pelvis and the ureter, and the clean blood exits by these little venules out into the renal vein. Okay, now if we look even closer, into a little part of the cortex there. In the cortex, you've got millions and millions and millions of these little filters called the nephron, okay? And nephrons are where the filtration actually happens. As you can see, they're orientated like this with the top bit pointing out, which we're gonna learn is the glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, and the proximal dist and distal uh, convoluted tubules. And then the loop of Henle dips back in to the medulla, and then our nephron, uh, as our nephron's finished by the uh, sort of draining down into the ureter, which is here, and it comes into the pelvis. So here are the words you have to know, right? We've got our renal artery coming in, and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to one individual nephron. And the branch of the renal artery is called the afferent arteriole that gets into here, into the glomerulus, more on that in the subsequent video, uh, and that is encased in the Bowman's capsule. That's where ultrafiltration takes place. Efferent arteriole brings the much reduced blood down and interacts with the loop of Henle. Okay, that then becomes the renal vein, which then exits out to join the larger renal vein and return the blood to the body. The filtrate, all the stuff that gets filtered out up here, ends up in the proximal convoluted tubule, and that brings the blood down, it brings the filtrate down into the loop of Henle, back up into the distal convoluted tubule, and then eventually into the collecting duct. Much of this you will know from GCSE, and again, much of the names you will know as well. Ultrafiltration is the, the, the really severe filtration that goes on in the glomerulus, and then selective reabsorption happens in the proximal convoluted tubule, right? And then eventually you get excretion, which again, you should know. The new bits and the bits that A-level students struggle the most with, I would say, are the osmoregulation and the ADH bits that happen in the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule. Okay, but more on those in a subsequent video. Okay, so that is the basics of our anatomy. That's video one. In video two, we're gonna look at ultrafiltration and selective reabsorption. Thank you very much.